having started at that company uh, was, for me, on the first uh, leg was to, to work with Keith. I didn't care what he was working on. He could have been working at Charmin des designing the new you know, toilet paper line. I'd have been like, okay. No <laughs> but the chance to work with him as an art director and get the kind of discussions that I had had with him that time in Comic-Con and looking at stuff and actually have that sharing of ideas going on was something that I had would just absolutely bend over backwards for and uh, have been working there since. And it was while at Sigil uh, that we found out about um, Keith's gimmick and situation. And what I noticed, and I think what kind of heightened his, might be the point of him if that was possible at the time, to be even more, was the relationship that he had with other people at Sigil. Not just other artists, but programmers who know ones and zeros, but very little about what a fall forest means you know, when displayed the right way or designers who have everything about, well, you know, in EverQuest they did this, so we really want to do this. You know, and instead wanted to do, well, what does Keith's world want to do and how do we make that work in the game, things like that. Um, and to these people who had been exposed to his art maybe in a small sense or not at all, he meant just as much as he did to the artists who had grown up with his things and worshipped his, his work in such a way and come to want to know the man because of the paintings. These people wanted to know more about the man because of the way he came across to them and the way that he treated them. And it was never grandstanding. It was never, you know, I've got to go talk to Keith Parkinson. It was just, I'm going to go talk to Keith. You know, we got to run some, through some stuff with Keith and, you know, see what he thinks about this. And he would offer up some ideas, but the key thing that he always ended a lot of things with, 90% to 100 that I knew of, every time with me at least, was, I don't know, I think this, this, and this, and this. What do you think? And it was just like, uh, Sure, is <laughs> kind of what your first instinct is. But then you think about it, and the more you realize he really wants to know, and he's really asking you here, was, well, I think this and this. That's, you know what, that, I like that better. Let's go with that. And for somebody who you already thought the world of, to be able to set aside his ideas and turn right here and go, yours is better, let's make that work, or let's do this instead. And the willingness to see, for him, to want to see you in a position where you could do these things better than you were doing them before, uh, with what was key with all of that. And I think what was key in people's relationship with Keith at Sydney. Um, if you want to go to the last one, actually. Okay. Um, I'm stealing this piece from Easley. <laughs> uh, mainly because I, I, Donato had called and asked, you know, well, you know, how many, which piece do you want to put up as your favorite piece? Technically, this is my favorite piece. <laughs> Druid Stone is a very, very close second. But this one was my absolute favorite. And probably... Not necessarily the first memory I have of it, but the best memory I have of it was um, working at Sigil for a year and a half. I got a call from Keith at the studio, and he's like, hey, man, you're still there? I was like, yeah. And, he's, and he said, well, I, I want to play some poker. Um, what, do you, what, do you, what are you guys doing there? So I was like, well, there's like three or four of us up here in the room. I was like, grab them. Come on over. Let's, let's get some beer and some, some poker chips, and let's play some poker. Absolutely. So we had to go play. <laughs> drove over to his house, which was a number of blocks up, and sat down. And I was the first one there, so he was like, "Yeah, just go to mill around. The other guys are on the way." So I was like, "Absolutely." So I'm in the museum of Keith at this point, going through all these paints that I had seen in books, but had never gone anywhere because he's always kept the best ones that are on the wall. And I remember coming around the corner and seeing that one, which I'd always thought was the best of the best, but thought I'll never see that. That's long gone. That's in a collection I'll never get to see. And there it was on the wall with its sister pieces. And I was just remember just my heart stopping, going, oh, my God, he still has it. And it's just unbelievably beautiful, and I can't believe this. So he came up and was looking at it, and I was like, look, all fanboy aside, this is the best thing you've ever painted. I absolutely love this piece, and I don't think that you have ever topped what's in here. Not to say that everything hasn't been good, but this is the one. And he's like, that's my favorite piece I've ever done. He said, that piece is, to me what I want every piece of mine to try and, and be since. And I don't know that I've actually done it, but I really love this piece. And we started talking about all the geeky stuff about it. The geeky stuff that we talked about meant the most, because um, much to my humility, Donna asked me to design the gravestone for Keith when that time came. And uh, we selected this piece, much in the fact that it was his favorite piece, but because of the symbolism that's in it, um, it felt like the right one. And the reasons were that everything in the painting points to the heart of the man that's on that stone. If you take the trance of all the branches, all the leaves, all of the stones, everything goes directly to the man's heart. And to me, that embodied everything 
that Keith did with his work was that he put his entire heart into it. He put his whole being into it. These worlds weren't fantasy worlds to Keith. They were Keith's world. We just got to see him every time he did a new painting for it. And to me, that was what was the most important thing about it. And after talking to Donna about it, she absolutely had already agreed at that, that point that this was the piece that needed to be on there. So the stone itself, when you actually see it, has a white marble or porcelain piece in the middle that has this image on it with Parkinson as his signature line across the top and his uh, birth and his death date. But this piece will forever be with him and watching over him uh, from that point on. Um, I basically wrote up one last thing that I ended up posting to a site of other artists. Um, it's a site that uh, holds a number of us on there, all of whom are in the industry in different conventions and have talked in the past and just generally spent a lot of time sharing artwork, giving critiques and whatnot. And uh, when he passed, it was really kind of a blow to a lot of people, and I didn't know what to say on the forum. I don't think a lot of people really knew what to say. But um, the only way I knew how to do it was just to write it down, because if I try and improvise it, it's not going to be too good. So basically, uh, I said, we all come into this industry with dreams and hopes for our futures in it. Most of us, if not all of us, have a luminary for us that is the pinnacle of those dreams and hopes. Someone who embodies all of the traditions and efforts that make this job of illustration one of constant growth and change, both in the work we do and the people we do it with. For me, Keith was that person. I've always wanted to be an illustrator. That was it. There was never anything else for me but that. Meeting Keith seven plus years ago and having him look at my work for the first time and offer advice was as, as if I was already a success. Keith had a way of never coming off as the learned master, offering scraps of knowledge to a starry-eyed acolyte. You always felt as though you were speaking to him as an equal from day one. He was a man who lived for his art and it shone through in every piece he ever did. He was never proud and never too proud to take the time to offer up advice or constructive criticism, and more importantly, was willing to accept it from anyone. Because in the end, it was about the art, and that was it. Uh, Keith was one of the most genuine people that I have ever had the honor to know, and I'm grateful for the time that I had with him, short as it was. His generous spirit extended from peers in the art world to those in his personal life, and he gave every ounce of himself to both. Uh, I appreciate you guys all coming down here. I know that it means a lot to his family. I know that they appreciate everybody's well wishes, those that have sent him through the website, and having talked to Donna on a fairly daily basis since that time, it's really helped her a lot in many ways as well to know that people miss him as much as they do. So thank you all for coming here today.